We're here in Mexico City. First time for me in 35 years. My family and I immigrated from Mexico City to the U.S. when I was two and a half years old. As a lot of people, you know, from foreign countries know, specifically Latin American countries, sometimes you come to the States or you immigrate under unique circumstances, so to put it. In my case, it was undocumented. Overstaying the visa and, you know, setting roots in, in LA. This is a story of, you know, millions of people. And for me, I, I wasn't able to come back and then return back to home, which is LA, as easily as, other, as a lot of my peers that were born in the States. So this is a very special trip, you know, to get to come out here. Here we go. Alright, we landed in the motherland, Mexico City. Bienvenidos. Aquí estamos en la Ciudad de México. Y estamos alistándonos para correr el maratón aquí en la Ciudad de México. For those that don't speak Spanish, uh, we are welcome to Mexico City. You arrived. And right now it's landing around 9.45 p.m. Uh, Saturday night. We're just a couple hours away uh, from the Mexico City Marathon. Um, yeah. Take it all in with us, it's a special experience. Um, this is my first time in Mexico City in 34 years. There's a whole backstory to that, but we'll get to that later. But I, I kind of want to rewind back on this story on kind of where it all started. So around September, October of 2023, our team was approached by one of our good friends and partners, Nate, from out in Boston. And uh, he approached us with the idea like, look, you guys have been talking about this marathon thing for a while about actually running it. How about we do it? You know, like, let's do something. I know that this was significant to Hustle. I know it's significant to you. How do you guys feel about doing it? It's coming up next year in March and moving forward from September, October, upwards to March, you know, everybody Train. We started taking in submissions for different runners from several different states and cities across the country to commemorate, you know, a special legacy, and that's hustle. It was something that we felt that we were, you know, responsible for doing. We all completed, you know, it's a great sense of accomplishment, you know, through all the aches and pains. You know, some people, it took a little bit longer to recover, some it took a little bit less, but everybody completed it nonetheless, and it was something very significant, you know, for the family and for the team. Now, a day or two after the marathon is over, I'm kind of meddling with the idea of maybe running another marathon, right? But I thought there was promise, you know, to do another one. So my heart led me to Mexico City Marathon. I thought, well, look, what better place than in my original home, which is Mexico City. Started training last week. 13.2? 13, yeah, about 13 point something. Yeah. Eight minute mile. See if the motherland treats me well. Man. When we ran the LA Marathon, my team tasked me with designing a running singlet, you know, for our team. And so we ended up going with all white singlet with black accents on the side. The marathon bar logo, run a lap under it. I had the LA Marathon logo on the back, teamwork, the TMC flag, and then our mantra, life is a marathon. So I thought for Mexico it would be fitting to do the inverted colorway and for the very first time do our marathon bar logo in a different language. In this case Spanish, instead of the marathon it says el maratón. Instead of it saying run a lap, it says corre una vuelta. And instead of life is a marathon, la vida es un maratón. I didn't really know exactly what to expect. What I will say is a lot more runners in LA, so there's a lot of congestion. That first starting point is a little bit slow. Just made my way little by little over those course of 20 minutes, kind of just getting my mind ready to, to make that run. Just really reflecting, you know, on the opportunity and the moment to run as part of my, you know, my homecoming back after 34 years and how meaningful this is for carrying the legacy of my brother Hustle, how meaningful it is for our team, our family, our brand, how meaningful it is for my family, what it means, you know, to be able to participate and experience and partake in this. First five miles, I was doing a good pace. I was really, you know, moving pretty thoroughly. Five miles in, seven minute, 28 seconds per mile thus far. City's electric, Mexico City residents aligning the streets with chance of si se puede in Mexico. It's beautiful. As the mileage, you know, kept going and I'm getting into like the nine, the 10, the 11 and the 12, Virtually at the halfway point, I start to have these crazy leg spasms. And 
I thought, well, maybe it's just, just one single uh, leg spasm that I've had, you know, the same way I had in the LA Marathon. So I kind of just shook it off, drank water, drank salt tablets, uh, gummies, and um, I kept kind of pressing through. Hey, it's rough. We're still at it though. We are inching closer to the finish line one way or another, even with these crazy spasms. Ooh, all right, let's go. And it felt like, no, with no exaggeration, like every mile, these leg spasms would continue to, you know, hit me. And so they've kind of, they, you know, halted my, my forward progress in terms of going at the rate that I wanted to and really had to slow it down and walk for a little bit. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. The bottom line was completion and trying to maybe uh, beat a personal record. Literally half of the marathon, I would say, it was a, good, a, lot of, a lot of walking at some point because of those leg spasms. Just had to continue to press through. Could to set kind of the scene throughout these different areas. I mean, you get to see all of like the recognizable landmarks of Mexico City. The streets were lined with people. The chants here in Mexico City were Así se puede, Mexico. Then flags, Mexican flags waving left and right. And then different signs with different Mexican sayings. People, you know, looking at my bib, chanting my name, sending words of encouragement that kind of like makes you push through the pain. My fellow Mexican nationals that are, you know, cheering me on and embracing me, which is, you know, fills your heart, you know, in a unique way. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice, that's why. All my life, I've been grinding all my life. Now the chants are changing from si se puede to si se pudo. Yes, you could. We just got a couple miles the road, closer and closer to the Socalo, which is the finish line. Socalo similarly is historic, you know, cobblestone road, older buildings, beautiful architecture. I and mean, there's this straight shot where you can see the Mexican flag and the cathedral, you know, just a, a stone's throw away, it almost seems. Check it out. A uh, part of me, you know, truth be told, was was overwhelmed by the feeling. One part of me wanted to, you know, shed a tear. I don't know if it was for pain or I don't know if it was for the emotion of the moment. And I got to that finish line. And as soon as I get to the finish line, I'm looking for my family. I find them, my wife, my sons, my aunt, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, they're there. You know, my boys come to the barricade, you know, to give me a hug and a kiss. It definitely is something, you know, that I'm very grateful to have experienced. And I know how, you know, how much time I have waited to have run a marathon for my first time here in Mexico City under the circumstances and, you know, with the whole context of, of the story that happened, I, to me is, you know, very special and I hope for anybody is in that circumstance that they can't travel, you know, to their country, I hope they're able to do so. Today, we're gonna go visit some very special people to me. My abuelita Delfina, who is my maternal grandmother, who at one point did live in, in the U.S. with us for you know extended periods of time. So I have a really, really close relationship with her. Our family didn't have the opportunity to come to her funeral because of our legal status. The story that happens, you know, with millions of people that immigrate, they don't get to go pay their final respect to their loved ones. So this is very special to me. Also uh, visiting the Basilica de Guadalupe to go see the original Virgen de Guadalupe. You know, I grew up Catholic, so getting to see that, it's, you know, it's a phenomenon that happened that has been studied, you know, by all the people that can study it and no one can explain how, how it appear other than a miracle. That's a way to kind of end this trip. <laughs>